Joining me now is Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Jack Dale, and Dr. Kim Dockery, Assistant Superintendent of Special Services. Welcome. Thanks. Great. We just saw a great piece about this concept called restorative justice. And um, before we jump into that, because we're going to talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. more, Dr. Dale, give us uh, some context around um, uh, our discipline reform and our processes now. Well, as you well know, um, over a year and a, probably a year and a half ago, we've had people uh, raising concerns about some of the discipline practices and processes and where this really gets into is kind of the support side of how we help kids who mm -hmm. maybe engage in behaviors that are not appropriate mm -hmm. and so what Kim and her team did was look at some of the best practices not only nationwide but some of the things that we're doing maybe in past in pockets mm -hmm. and brought together a, a much more complete comprehensive system to really it's trying to restore kids' behavior back to the, yeah. the mainstream and get them back into the education program where they belong. And in the same, at the same time, um, give them some skills that will last a lifetime, hopefully. Is that That's right. So if kids are out um, for a suspension for having a fight, but they come back and they haven't gotten the skills to negotiate or, mm -hmm. or mediate the situation, the same thing will happen again. Mm -hmm. Restorative justice is not who did it and what's your consequence, but what harm and how are you going to repair that? Mm -hmm. And it also involves the parents, so it's a very transparent process of, as you mentioned, learning skills that um, then can uh, change outcomes for kids being in school. And so uh, we saw a clip from Mountain View, but where else is this taking place in the county? Well, as Dr. Dale said, we used to have pockets, so we knew that we had um, restorative justice practices going on at Westfield, at South County, at Lake Braddock, um, at Herndon Middle, and what this gave us was an opportunity to say, we know these are best practices, how can we build the skills so that every school has access mm -hmm. and so that we also build training for the um, administrators, teachers involved at the individual school sites. Mm -hmm. So we have really focused on middle and high and this spring there's training for administrators and this summer more extensive training for um, school teams to build their capacity. And where is the funding coming from for this? Uh, the school board allocated a, a set of funds specifically for this program. Kim last spring designed at least the beginning steps of it and then ongoing but then the board also set aside another pool of resources that if we need to tap into this year for more training for whatever uh, might be the case more staff to go with that mm -hmm. then we could tap into that so the and what we're trying to do is monitor um, our all, also our progress on this and, and so we've got a whole data set that we're looking at of mm -hmm. what's happened with kids who have been disciplined and what's their what kind of impact has it had on their academic program and their extracurricular program? Uh, what's the best way to, if borrow the term here, to restore their, their kind of behavior and mindset to be able to be high-functioning kids in the academic environment? And we have to remember, we're still dealing with a very, very small percentage mm -hmm. of our student body right. here. Right. But the notion is that we are trying to not leave any child behind. So even ch children who are behaving inappropriately, we want to make sure that we rectify that and get them back into the, to the mainstream. So right. Um, Kim, what benefits does this process have for the family of the one who was harmed, who, the victim? I think a good example is in a bullying case where uh, you often feel that, I know as a, as a parent that you said that the person that was bullying, something happened. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel very good about that outcome for my own child who was the victim. Mm -hmm. But in this process, you ask the students and their parents to engage in the restorative process. So you, it's very transparent and you feel very satisfied that there is there are actions going on and that there are positive outcomes at the end of it. So at the table describe, so both families are there, or rep both parents of the sides and then a, a train or a facilitator. Facilitator and the students themselves. Yeah. And, and that's in the case in a fight or um, in a bullying incident, but we're also using these same practices. Some schools have a restorative justice circle for detention. Mm -hmm. Instead of just sitting, we really understand and uh, help the students understand how to reflect on the actions mm -hmm. and change the behavior for the future. Yeah, so this, this really bodes well for um, really learning some life skills because we all have to deal with conflict in our lives, even as adults. Uh, so do you see that happening, that this will take them into? 
I, I life? think I think that was one of the things that um, when we taped at Mountain View and we were talking to the students, I heard a student say, you know, before this, my issue was with my teacher and I never knew her point of view mm -hmm. until I went through this process. Mm -hmm. Point of view will help you lifelong to understand how are we going to um, work with others any place. So right. I, I really do think it gives skills for a lifetime. Excellent. And so Dr. Dale, you'll be back in the spring to report out on the data that we're collecting. Right. In uh, April, we'll be having a work session with the school board uh, as we annually do just before making any revisions to the student uh, responsibility and rights document. And at that time, we'll be sharing a lot of data that we've been trying to collect now. Um, to reinforce a piece that Kim and both of you have said is, you know, quite often we've felt that we've been had our uh, hands tied about sharing mm -hmm. with the victim what we did with the, to use the term, a perpetrator, if you will. Because of student privacy. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, you want to protect the privacy of that family and that child, but now you actually have a, as Kim says, a kind of a transparent method, at least for those two mm -hmm. entities to have conversations, um, which does help. Yeah. does help. Well, thank you both for being here. Thank you.